next few moments, turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter number two. If you know the Lord is worthy, you ought to say, God, you're worthy. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for being the Savior of our world. Today's passage is a recount of how the conditions were created for Jesus to come and appreciate all the different elements that have laid some framework for all of us to uh, appreciate that Jesus' uh, arrival was something that was not haphazard. It was not a coincidence, but it was a part of God's divine plan. And I don't know about you, but in this moment in time, I'm glad to be reminded that God has a plan. Amen. And, and, and this plan is not a plan that is easily, if uh, even possible, uh, to be thwarted, but the plan of God will always outlast our plans. And uh, any, any kind of contingency we would try to introduce into God's plan, how many of you know God has a way of making sure that uh, when the time is right, uh, Jesus will show up? And so uh, on a day like today, I, I hope we can spend a few moments and just talk a little bit about why I believe that Christmas is so significant, why I think it matters for us today. Uh, Luke chapter number two, verse number one, uh, hopefully it's on the screen and, and we can read through this a little bit together. We're going to pull uh, our, 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 our sermon really from a couple of verses, but I, I thought it'd be great to just read through this account uh, I don't want to take for granted that all of us have read this before because, you know, this is the new school church. Amen. And uh, sometimes we, we can we can get a little lost in the shuffle. Amen. Uh, verse number one, about that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a. Lord, have mercy. My eyes don't fail me now. <laughs> let's let's read together. Praise God. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. Man, that's small too. Amen. <laughs> Somebody give me a Bible. No, I'm just playing. And this was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to their own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town for the census. And as a descendant of David, Joseph had to go there. Joseph went with Mary, his fiance, who was pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to a son, her firstborn, and she wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel or the inn. And there was, and there were shepherders uh, camping in the neighborhood and they were keeping night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. Somebody say, it's for everybody. A Savior has just been born in David's town, a Savior who is Messiah and Master, and this is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. And at once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises, glory to God in the heavenly heights, 
peace to all men and women on earth who, who please him. And as the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds uh, were geeked over it. The shepherds talked it over. Touch your neighbor. Talk it over with somebody. Amen. <laughs> Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. And they left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. Amen. Bow your heads with me and pray for your pastor this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the word of God that has been read for us. The people of God, we ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And even as we seek to preach and teach your gospel this morning, on this Christmas morning, remind us, Lord, not only does this day matter, but remind us that you are with us. And we will say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Give your neighbor a quick high five and tell them God is with you today. God is with you. Now, of course, across the world, uh, the church is indeed having one of our high holy days. Uh, this is a day where the Christian church uh, for uh, some 2,000 years have designated Christmas Day, December 25th, as the restarting of our Christian calendar. Uh, that for the marking of this day and this season... It is an opportunity for you and I to be reminded that uh, no matter how terrible or badly things go or are getting or, or may be in your life, uh, that God always has an opportunity for you and I to get a fresh start, not one that is arbitrary on the day or the time, but one that is very much committed to the coming of Jesus. And not just the coming once of Jesus, but his coming over and over and over again. Now, it's important to appreciate that while there is a secular nature of this celebration that is definitely cooked into our culture, how many of you know that you can be doing the same practice, but it can have two totally different meanings? Amen. That there are often all kinds of ways that practices that we engage in uh, can easily be, be very different in meaning and significance, even if we are calling it the same thing, if we are engaging in some similar uh, uh, activities, that the significance and the root cause, if you will, of that practice is very much connected to not just the origin of the practice, but to the impact and to the emphasis, and dare I say, uh, to the residual effects once the practice is over. I'm here to tell you that there is a significant uh, 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 relevance to the, the way the holiday is practiced in this country. Uh, or corporations and businesses and stores, they built their whole annual budget based off of these last six weeks. And they make sure to make sure that you have uh, them in mind. Hello, somebody. Uh, so they can go into the new year in the black. Praise God. They are, they are very much making sure that the celebration of Christmas in their mind, is about what you can bring to them. It is a plan. It is a scheme. It is something that they hire consultants and they hire all kinds of extra people and they, they invest in decorations just to make you more willing to part with that which uh, you have been working all week long to put in your bank account. Uh, hello, somebody. I'm talking about the significance of Christmas to some folk. But how many of you know when uh, we talk about the significance of Christmas 
to the body of Christ, to the church, those who are called out, that there is a different kind of thing at play. That is not just about you and I trying to accumulate more things, but it is about you and I being reminded that when Jesus came, Jesus came to save the world from ourselves, our sins, our our ways that may not please God. And appreciate that this salvation that has come, be reminded, it is not just the salvation of your soul. For Jesus came to save your soul and your body. Because how many know it's hard for your body to be, uh, or your soul to be saved if your body is left unattended to? I know there's a whole lot of nice ideas about how, you know, there is no material impact behind the gospel of Jesus in your day-to-day reality. But be, be mindful, my brothers and sisters, that that is not the way Jesus came. Jesus did not come as a spirit only. But one of the bedrock foundational principles of our faith is that Jesus inhabited the body, the human body of this world. Why? Because what God was becoming was so we could in return become like God. It was this very fascinating kind of transferring, if you will, of not only just the divinity of God's work in the world, but it was God setting you and I up for a transformation that we will need. And I don't know about you, but if there is one thing that is clear to me today is that we are in need of some transformations. Hello, somebody. Because many of us, uh, we can spend all our time working to change everything and ourselves stay the same. Or we can be working so hard to change ourselves and everything around us stays the same. The great thing about the coming of Jesus, Jesus does not discriminate on transformation. When Jesus shows up, Jesus will change you. He'll change your situation. And he'll change everything that is attached. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him Jesus will change everything. So when we take a look at this text, it's important, I think, to appreciate a couple things that make you and I uh, not only aware of why this season matters, but what is happening uh, when Jesus shows up and why I think you and I need to be mindful of what must be going on in our lives if Jesus is going to continue to show up. The first thing that I think the text lifts up is that timing matters. Everybody say timing matters. The scripture says that at the right time, at the appointed time, it was time for Mary to give birth to Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, I think this issue of time is often both a blessing and a curse to the child of God. Because how many of you know our time and God's time are often not in sync with one another? Do I have an honest Christmas, uh, Christmas church today? Amen. How many got your own schedule and God's schedule rarely lines up with your schedule? All right. Thank God for a few honest folk in here today. And the rest of y'all, I want to know how that working out for you. Amen. <laughs> it's important to appreciate that while you and I are always trying to figure out what time it is, that in the mind of God, God has a time, a plan that is often beyond our ability to fully ascertain at one moment. It's kind of like you and I trying to drink out of a water, uh, out, of a, out of a fire hydrant. Amen. I don't know if any of you have ever tried that before. Amen. A straw versus a fire hydrant. Uh, you can get enough water out of the straw that will be palpable to your capacity. But sometimes, you know, you put your face in that fire hydrant and you'll get more than what you bargained for. Mm-hmm. Well, often I find that the timing of God is a calendar that is often too large for me to fully embrace at one moment. But this is also, I think, a gift for us because 
it helps you and I to appreciate a couple things. Number one, that we are not a, a historical people. That we are connected across time, across the story of God in history, that from age to age and generation to generation, God is working a plan to redeem and to bring back together that which has fallen apart. And when the time is right, my brothers and sisters, God will show up and begin to make all those loose ends in our lives come together. Could it be that one of the great gifts of this Christmas morning is that God just wants to remind some of us that timing is all in the eyes of the beholder. But if their beholder is Jesus, how many of you know you will never be out of time? Mm -hmm. that, that, that the timing of Jesus is often coming right in the nick of time. The saints just say he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. And that's why in this story, it's so interesting to see that time was being used in many different ways. The Caesar Augustus, the Roman Empire emperor, if you will, had called a census. And this census meant that everybody had to travel to their home origin, their home country of origin. And this country of origin required them to leave their place of comfort, their place of, 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 of sustainability, their, their place where they were making their lives, and they had to pretty much go be an immigrant in another place. Isn't it interesting that Jesus, because of the time he was being born into, was being born into the world as an immigrant, as someone who was displaced, not because of the, the decision of Joseph and Mary, his parents, but because of the declaration of the government, which helps you and I think to appreciate that you can be living in this world and try not to be involved in anything, and sometimes this stuff will overwhelm you and my life in ways that we did not ask for. But the coming of Jesus is the necessary divine interruption that helps you and I to put a pause on the timing of this world and realize that, man, God, even when the world has its own calendar going on, you have a way of breaking into this reality and causing me to take a step back and say, God, what are you doing? When Jesus comes, Jesus will come with a resume. I love uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that was read a little bit. For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and the authority will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, the prince of Peace and his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore, for the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. My brothers and sisters, timing matters because there is a time that is set for God to interrupt our lives. And you and I cannot be filled with despair because our timing and the timing of God does not seem to be in sync at the moment. I want you to know that God is working. God has a plan. God has a clock. God has a calendar. And this clock, this time, this calendar, when it is the appointed time, how many know Jesus is showing up? Jesus is showing up. So one of the first things I want to ask you, what does the timing of Jesus coming mean so much to you and I right now? With all the things that are happening, why would Jesus coming mean so much in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of our community, in the life of our country? We talked and we prayed earlier about the circle of the Lord and camping round about us. I don't know about you, but in this moment where so many are filled with despair, 
So many are worried about what's happening. So many don't know what's coming. I want you to know that Jesus is here. And he's here to carry us through our trial. Somebody holler, Jesus is here. The second thing that I think the scripture lifts up is that place matters. Somebody say place matters. Verse number seven, she wrapped, talking about Mary, Jesus in a blanket and laid him in a manger. Now understand my loved ones that a manger is no place for the savior of the world to come and arrive in. A manger, many of us have have greatly sanitized the Christmas story, but the manger was pretty much a toilet. It was that place where the animals uh, did all of their things that no one really cared uh -huh, to, 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 to be around. Amen. Uh, that the manger was the place of messiness. It was a place that folks would never imagine you would lay the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. But I want to declare this morning that the place where you are does not intimidate God showing up. And often God will show up in your most messy places. Hello, somebody. I mean, this is why I think another great gift of this Christmas story is for all of us to be reminded that we all have some places in our lives, the mangers in our lives. You ought to tell your neighbor, you got a manger, you got a manger. You have a place where you least expect Jesus to show up. And sometimes even your loved one don't know what your manger is. You hide in that manger. That manger is, is, is your private property. But how many of you know Jesus is willing to show up even in your manger? He's willing to show up and become one with our messiness. Augustine, one of the North African church fathers, he says that God became flesh so we can become like God. It's called divinization, this idea that wherever we are in our worst or best place, that God is able and willing to show up. And in this Christmas morning, I wonder, are you able to create space for Jesus to show up. Where is the place where you need a divine interruption for Jesus to come and divinize the messy place of your life? How is the incarnate word showing up as a hope for us in this season? For oftentimes, we are always preparing and we hear it being told that, you know, man, I need to get myself together before I allow Jesus to have some, some room and hang out time. But how many of you know that, uh, you know, when it came time for Jesus to show up, Jesus just showed up and Jesus hung out wherever Jesus needed to be. I don't know about you today, but these are some messy times. Some of our families are in some messy seasons. Our communities are in some messy seasons. Our country is in a messy season. Some of our personal lives and decisions, messy. But the Christmas story reminds us that Jesus is willing to show up in the messiness. That's some good news. That's some good news. That you don't have to sanitize, be sanitized, have everything sanitized for Jesus to show up. Because how many know when Jesus shows up, Jesus does some sanitizing on his own? So question, where are the places in your life you least expect Jesus to arrive? What is your manger? 
And how do we need Jesus to redeem our places of messiness? Redemption. Redemption. Those places of messiness, God can redeem those places. Make those places actually become a source of life. Your depression, your anger, your abuse, your fear, your pain. It's not to glorify it. It's not to say that it's a good thing. It's to say that Jesus can show up in that place and cause everything around you to forget the manger and see the glory. Anybody got some mangers in your life? You're like, God, I need you to show up and, 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 and let your glory overwhelm. Let your presence overwhelm this manger, messy space. Then the last thing, availability matters. Somebody say availability matters. Why were they in a manger? Well, because it was time for Jesus to arrive. But at verse number seven says there was no room in the inn. And, of course, this is very self-explanatory. In this culture and in this moment, we all have to answer the question, are we available to experience the coming of Jesus? And, again, not just the coming of Jesus on Christmas Day, but the coming of Jesus every day. The kind of coming that is always about you and I making space and time to experience Jesus, particularly in the times where it seems like he's not coming fast enough. There was no room for them in the end, partially because there were circumstances, I'm sure, around them. Everybody was in town for the census. Everybody was in town doing what they were called to do as their duty to their country as their their duty to their culture and because they didn't get there in time or because circumstances were beyond their control there was no room for them in the end and I just want to submit to you that there will always be things happening in our lives even this morning Christmas morning for many of us we had to talk ourselves into coming to worship or 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 prying ourselves away from the game, which, you know, is being DVR by many of us. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because there was a choice. Will I make myself available? Not because you not coming or you coming is the make or break uh, 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 decision. It is really about how can I make my priorities built around the coming and the staying of Jesus and the work that God is doing in my life. There will always be opportunities for you and I to tap out and say, man, I've had enough. I'm going to go and do this way and go that way and go down that path. But I want to submit to you that there is an opportunity as we start this season, move into this new year, that you and I can make room for Jesus. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, one of the parallel passages, it says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all of us, training us to renounce worldly passions and in this present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Some of what we need to do while we are making room, we need to start cleaning out some things that are taking up a little bit too much space. Because quiet that is kept, we got folks staying in the rooms of our heart that are taking up too much room. <clears throat> and that's why there's no room for Jesus. Some of us in this season got to give some folks some eviction notices and some walking papers and got to do some, some winter cleaning. Forget the spring, amen. Don't wait till the spring. That's a little bit too long. 
How many know that some of us, we got to make some room for Jesus? This is, this is indeed, I think, one of the, the great significance the, the great significance of this Christmas season and, 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 and everything that I hope we experience as followers of Jesus in this season is that we can appreciate, number one, that Jesus has come to bring us life. And this life is not based on our goodness, but it's based on the plan of God, the timing. That there will always be a moment in our lives where we will know our great need for God. And that is the timing. There will always be a place that will be in our life, those messy places and spaces where we will think God can't work and God can't dwell and God can't exist. And God will show up. And the showing up of God in that manger like place will create so much faith, so much healing, so much salvation. And then there's always an opportunity for us to say, God, I am available. I'm available for you to live and to dwell in my life, in my family life, in my calling, in my vocation, in every part of me. This is why this season matters so much. And so today, as we stand to our feet, everyone, I want you to grab the hand of someone next to you and I want you to close your eyes and invite yourself to reflect on why this coming of Jesus, why it should matter, why it must matter in your life, in our lives.